we're working on Christmas cards this week, I'm going to have several stamps available for the background and this is one using a Stampendous Birch Forest background. I really love Birch Forest for winter cards. I'm using my stamping platform to make sure I get the stamp nice and central on my piece of paper. It's uh, cut so that it fits the cards that I bought. I bought a pack of cards from Michaels that are five and a half inches by six inches when they're folded. So I try and make sure that everything fits them. And I like to use hot press ash paper so that the stamp will be nice and crisp and, and uh, completely stamped on that paper. A textured paper is really difficult to stamp on. Even so, I have to put a lot of pressure and I want to do a second stamping to make sure I have some nice dark crisp lines for my background trees. I'm using Ranger Archival Waterproof Ink. And not all inks are waterproof, so I like to stick with this one that I know is waterproof because I'm going to do watercolour over the top, or we are, in our class this week. So after I've stamped the background, I'm going to use one of my stickers that you can get from dollar store, staples, office places, anywhere pretty much. Half inch diameter sticker will be the moon in this picture. Makes a little mask for the moon when you're painting. And you can see here when I take the sticker off, you have a nice bright white moon. This is a really simple little card. It doesn't take long to make. You could make several of them in an afternoon. I'm using Thalo Blue to start and I'm going to paint most of the background behind the trees with the Thalo Blue and then come in with some ultramarine blue for shadow. I'm painting right over the tops of the background tree trunks. I'm not going to paint those two foreground trees so that they stand out in the foreground but the background trees are in shadow so they just become part of the color I'm using for the background which could be anything could just be shadow it could be sky it's a very simple little card I'm changing to ultramarine blue now for the darker blue at the top of the picture so you saw when I did the thalo blue I came up from the snow and now for the darker ultramarine blue I am coming down from the top of the paper going right over the top of that moon sticker those little stickers are pretty good at resisting the paint. I'm going carefully between the branches of the foreground trees and not worrying at all about the background trees. And I don't want to go too dark with my blues, but you can go darker if you want to. That's, that's a compositional choice. You could use a little bit of violet or purple in your background too. As long as it wasn't too much you don't want it to be too overpowering and I'm just doing a little bit more shading and detail with the tip of my number eight brush and I almost always use my silver black velvet brushes they're my favorite the really beautiful brushes and the paints that I use are mostly Winsor & Newton sometimes I will use uh, core paints I really like the core watercolor paints and other times M. Graham. M. Graham makes some lovely paints that are mixed with honey, beautiful, moist, artist quality paints. But most of my colors are going to be Winsor & Newton. So I'm using the Thalo Blue and, and sometimes a little bit of Ultramarine to put some shadows in the snow and bring down some of those trees so that they come down right to the snow line. And around these two trees that are staying white, I want to put a bit more shadow at the bottom. Especially the corners. If you have your masking tape forming a border around your painting, you really want to bring your color up to the border. Now I have a, many different types of iridescent paint, and this is the cheapest, the cheapest variety I have that I bought at Michael's. And I want to use a, a sort of iridescent white, silvery white, and I want to put a little bit of that on the snow. Now you can use any type of iridescent paint or Winsor & Newton make an iridescent medium that you can mix with your watercolor paints. So if you don't want to go out and spend a lot of money on 
all the different colours of iridescent paint, buy a $12 pot of Winsor & Newton iridescent medium and mix it with any of your watercolours or powder pigments. I want to dry that and then peel off that little round sticker. It peels off better if you heat it with the heat gun or the hairdryer first. And I'm going to touch up the white on this picture with a little bit of Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. And I want to put a little bit of texture on the trees in the background. And you may say, well, why didn't you paint around them? Well, I don't want that sort of look. I wanted them in shade and shadow. And then put a little bit of texture on them after I painted them in the blue. Also, it would have been extremely fiddly to paint around all of them. Much better to just put a little touch of white on afterwards. And I find this Dr. PH Martin's white is, is wonderful on watercolors. It's uh, the same sort of white as your watercolor paper, a warmish white. And it's, it's a water soluble paint. It's quite opaque and it just blends in with everything perfectly. I prefer it to using gouache. I prefer it to using white watercolor. It's my go-to one. And I'm going to just tap my brush. I'm going to put, I put some watery bleed proof white on there and I just want some splatter, some snow splatter on my painting. A Couple of times with that. And if you're not very confident doing that, practice on a piece of scrap paper first until you kind of get the hang of it. Now I've peeled off the moon sticker, I want to put the blue on the trees that are in front of the moon. That will help push the moon into the background. And I also want to use a little bit of ultramarine blue to shade the foreground tree trunks so they're not so stark and flat. Give them a little bit of shading. I think I am looking over. I think I added a tiny little bit of Prussian blue with the ultramarine blue there. I may have added thalo. I'm not actually sure now. I find I simply cannot do a commentary while I'm painting. I'm the kind of painter that really needs to focus and not talk. So I do the commentary after I finish the painting. And I don't always remember what I did. So when you finish this, you can mount it on some lovely background paper before you put it on your card. I'm going to put a little bit of iridescent paint on the tree trunk. You can stamp Merry Christmas, Let It Snow, um, Winter Solstice, whatever you like on the front of the card or just leave the front of the card as it is. Here are some of the other choices of Christmas backgrounds that I have from different companies that make Christmas cards. And here are some of the examples that you could make with those stamps. This one is actually an embossing folder. And these ones I've used white, white stamping ink on black and blue backgrounds. Thank you for watching.